All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Word with Ty Brownlow. I'm your host, Ty Brownlow. And remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special guest for you. I'll give you a couple of words about my guest. Creative, professional, founder, business. All the way from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, y'all. Put your hands together for Miss Tiffany Nicole Cartwright. How are you? Greetings. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, now, you have a very interesting story. Um, you are the CEO of Amera Products. Okay. And before we really get into everything else, I just want to run down some, you know, um, facts pretty much about you and how we got here to this point. All right. Now, you, um, you know, pretty much have or had a career, you know, a professional career in criminal justice. Um, you actually served as a judge, you know. Um, yeah. What was life like before Amera Products for you? Because, you know, that's, I mean, for me, that's a big shift going from criminal justice all the way into beauty. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, um, it's funny that sometimes that's the way life turns out. I was, in fact, um, serving as an administrative law judge for the state of Michigan. I graduated law school, um, was blessed to have a, a really great legal career, um, really enjoyed working in the legal profession. Um, however, when I was working as a judge, suddenly uh, due to budget cuts, uh, without notice, I lost my job. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so we were laid off um, indefinitely and I got the pink slip and was suddenly, um, I went from presiding over um, handling unemployment hearings to collecting unemployment, wow. just like that. And so it was actually at that time, that's what turned me into entrepreneurship and business because um, as it turns out, I had started mixing products uh, when my daughter was born because she was born with eczema. And I was actually looking for um, natural ways to help her skin. And I didn't want to use steroids or anything like that. I really wanted to go the natural route. So I literally got in the kitchen and I started mixing these natural concoctions um, that actually helped her skin. Never thinking it would be a skincare business or that I would even start a business, just really a mom trying to help my daughter. You know what I mean? And that was it. And so I would give it out to friends and family, you know, birthday gifts, you know, Christmas gifts, things like that. And later when I lost my job, you know, my brother, he founded an organization called Global Empowerment here in Detroit, where he promotes entrepreneurship, particularly in the African-American community for the purpose of bringing change so that we can become job creators, so that we can afford opportunities, so we can keep dollars in our community. And so he was on the radio and he's talking to the radio audience and I'll tell you how he's like, listen, that book that's inside of you. And he says, you know, that invention you've been sitting on. He said, those recipes that were handed down to you from mama and grandmama and them. He said, those concoctions you've been mixing in your kitchen. Hello. He said, that's our business that you're sitting on. And he said, the world needs what you have. You are an entrepreneur. You are a business owner and you need to start a business. And I'll tell you, it was like the light bulbs went off. It's like, bing, 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 bing. He's talking to me, you know what I mean? And at this point, as I said, I lost my job. So it's like, well, why not? You know what I mean? What have you got to lose? You know, there's nothing to lose in, in at least trying. And so that's what I did. I went ahead, I, I started the business. Um, I like to say, I turned that test into a testimony because mm -hmm. as it so happens, right after I started the business, he announced to us that Shark Tank was coming and encouraged us go pitch your products to shark tank they're coming to detroit they're looking for entrepreneurs and so a group of us we went down to tech town here in the d and i got a yes from shark tank and i'm like oh my goodness this is so awesome this is so wonderful so that was here locally i haven't gone on the show yet in you know in la but hoping to one day soon um but then that same year he announced that walmart has a program called made in america and through this Made in America campaign, they do an open call every year where they invite people from all over the country to come and um, share their products, pitch their products in front of buyers. And so having done it with Shark Tank, I thought, okay, hey, once again, what do we have to lose? And so my son and my mom and I, we drove all the way down to Bentonville, Arkansas from Detroit 
uh, met with the buyers, had great meetings with the buyers, and was able to you know get a yes from Walmart at that time. So um, from there, it's just been like one blessing after another. Um, the brand is doing really, really well. I just got a letter yesterday. It's going to be in Meyer as well. And tomorrow I have a Target. I'm going to be participating in Target's Black History Month program. And the company, I was one of 42 black businesses in the whole country to be selected uh, by Target to talk to the Target team and, and pitch the same products to Target as well. So it has been amazing, but that's in a nutshell, that's uh, how it started. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, some of the words that you may have you heard me use when I introduced this young lady right here were creative, professional, and business. And found it because I mean she came up with the product she had to like found it so I mean she created it so she found it. It, it. There we are. Look, that is a wonderful and empowering and very like I mean much needed testimony. Like people need to hear mm -hmm. it because uh, oh yes, you have to understand. First and foremost, let me just say, shout out to your brother. You know, man, I don't know if that's <laughs> big brother, little brother, whatever brother, <laughs> but shout out to brother for like sparking, you know, that interest in you. And man, sometimes, you know, our siblings do come in handy when they're not getting on our nerves. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, he's phenomenal. And he has helped so many people um, start businesses. Really, it's been a game changer for so many people. And I have, you know, because of Walmart, I've traveled the country and met entrepreneurs everywhere. And they're like, boy, we wish we had a global empowerment um, in our city because what's happening is so phenomenal. So, okay, so man, that sort of ties into my, you know, question, pretty much one of the first questions I have to ask. Like, you know, I know everyone's going to say, you know, you have to have a game plan in order to go into business. I understand that. You know, um, basically the business is the game plan. Making money is the game plan. Getting it into other people's hands is the game plan, but I understand that. Um, but besides having the game plan, what other piece of advice can you really offer those who have a talent, but no course of action of profiting off that talent? Because at one point in time, as you said, hey, I'm sitting here, I'm doing it. You know, I'm just making these concoctions, you know, to help my daughter out. You know, I'm not even thinking about the business aspect of this. So for those who are in the same boat, but they don't have any course of action of, you know, making money off their talent, what little nugget could you offer them? I think the most important thing that we have to do as business owners and entrepreneurs, especially those who are contemplating taking that leap, mm -hmm. is understanding that it's not about you. I have so many people that say, well, you know, I don't need to do all that. And, you know, I mean, I'm good where I am and I'm happy where I am and, you know, I'm good. And if I do it fine, if I don't do it fine, but no, that is not the case. And particularly in the black community, because, you know, so many times when they go and we have the opportunity and my brother talks about this all the time, they say, we need jobs, we need jobs. You know, what, what's, what's the problem in the community? How can we help? What can we do? And the first response is that, you know, give us jobs, give us jobs. But the real solution is not jobs, but job creators. Thank you. Because, you know, and, and here's the thing about it. What people don't understand is through entrepreneurship, you can become a job creator. For example, with my business, I want to hire women who are returning citizens. I want to hire women who've been victims of domestic violence. I want to hire women who have escaped human trafficking. And I want to bring them in and teach them not only how to perform a job, but how to own a business. You see what I mean? Now, if I don't have a business or if I didn't grow this product line or if I didn't try to talk to these big box retailers so that I can get big enough to be able to hire people and to create those jobs, where, you know what I mean, what happens to those would be workers that would be there? What, what about these women that I'm able to reach? If I don't do what I need to do, I won't be able to help them. And so oftentimes, like I said, we think about in terms of our personal situation, but we have to start thinking in terms of community. We have to start thinking, even with my skincare line, if it helps my baby girl, how many other moms and grandmoms and aunties and caregivers are dealing with people who have skin issues that need a product like mine mm -hmm. to help their skin? We 
eating something that's natural and organic that's not going to irritate or or harm them in any way if i don't run with what i have if i don't share it with the world then that affects other people that could benefit from the product that i have she just told y'all <laughs> what it is i mean look at she just gave y'all well, man she has dropped the mic okay get out there it's not about you it's about the people that you serve so exactly. if you have an idea if you have that talent even if you're an artist and you have art trust me it's not about you it's for other people to see and create you know exactly. from your creations and find inspiration from your inspiration you know that's right so, uh pretty much most of the time it's the story behind the creation that people you know find most comfort in so it's not about you people it's not about you all right get out there create grow that business okay all right mm -hmm. so now my next question for you would be you know now you come from this professional background all right okay serving in the courts and all you know i mean very professional rules this that what have you now how much of your you know skills or work ethic from your former career and criminal justice rolls over into your current business? Not a lot, really. Um, they're vastly different. They are. It's it's vastly different, and and it's important to emphasize that because oftentimes, you know, people who are contemplating business, they think that you have to have all this knowledge, all this know how, all this background, this long, you know, career. And the reality of it is, you don't need any of that. And the lack of that has nothing to do with your ability to start and grow a business. And, you know, I oftentimes say that when we hear or we look at people now, I always say, you know, we see them in their glory, but do you know their story? Okay. And oh. I say that because, listen, if you hit that rewind button, you see that the people who founded some of the most successful businesses that we know of today, many of them dropped out of high school, dropped out of college, suffered, they were uh, uh, dyslexic, had all type of speech impediments. And one of the best examples that I like to share um, with your viewers and listeners is, I talk about a woman who was a stay at home mom in the city of Detroit, who found a recipe in a newspaper for cheesecakes started making these cheesecakes in her basement of her home being a mom with kids sent her husband to work with these cheesecakes saying babe take these to work and see if you can get me some sales well he took 12 of them to work and they started flying off the shelf so much that she was able to bring him home from the job and they started working these cheesecakes from this basement in the city of detroit not college educated, not a bunch of letters behind the name, no career, no none of that. And that business that started in the basement in Detroit is now known as the Cheesecake Factory. Damn. So bottom line, people, it ain't about you. Okay. All right. Get out there and show the world your skill, man. For real. Hey, like, right. And you know, everything that you just said goes back into what you said previous. You know, you don't know the story. Like, mm -hmm. everyone sees the glory with the right. story. Like, that's right. Like, you know, and people fail to realize sometimes, like, just being a creative, period, you know, and like me creating this show. Like, of course, or, all right, you get to see the ending of it because it's all edited and, you know, it's put before you, but no one has, I mean, no one sees, hey, you know, I have to get in contact with this person, write these questions, do this, do that, what have you. Mm -hmm. Everything behind the scenes besides what you see. So, yes. I, like I like that. So, now, I want you to answer this next question for me. And I really want you to go there if you have to go there. So, my next question for you is, why are women business owners, particularly black business owners, important for the economy? You know what? One of the main reasons that we, as, as women of color, it is so important that we get out there, and there's so many. First of all, like I said, if we don't grow businesses and we don't contribute to the business community, who's gonna hire the women that look like us that have fallen on hard times? 
who's going to give them an opportunity? You know, we talk about the issues that, and, and I guess, you know, when we look at other women, you have to see yourself. And so the young girls that are on the streets that are selling their bodies because they, they feel like that's the only way they can survive, who can help them better than a person who is them? You just see what I'm saying? Um, when I talk about, like I said, women who are returning citizens, if you come out of, you know, the system, or what have you, it's hard to get a job because they always want to ask you about your record. And if you're truthful about it, they're going to toss your application in the trash. And if you lie about it, they'll hire you. But when they find out you lied about it, they're going to fire you and you're not going to collect unemployment. You see what I mean? So if, if someone doesn't take that leap of faith and extend that hand out to them, who's going to do that? And we can't look outside of our community um, and expect that it's going to continue that way. The other thing that is so important to do too is that if we don't consider continue to shatter these glass ceilings, then when will it happen and how will it happen? You know, I have a daughter. I don't have a granddaughter, but I have a great niece. And, and what I want to make sure is that I leave this world a better place for them. It's important that we as black women start to blaze this trail for the young women who are gonna come behind us. They need to see us in these positions. When you think of CEO, CEO should not, the first thing that comes to mind should not be a middle-aged white man. CEO can be me. I am a CEO. Do you see what I'm saying? And and mm -hmm. and you know, my brother talks about this. He says, you know, you will never seek what you don't see. And you'll never receive what you don't seek. And so it's so important. And I love to quote uh, Madam Vice President who talked about her mother said, you know, you may be the first, but just make sure you're not the last. And I think that for us as black women it is so incumbent upon us because we are doing a whole lot of firsts. There's a lot of firsts. And so when you think about that, you know, look at the doors that have been open. I always like to look at uh, Venus and Serena Williams. You know, once they could see, hey, black girls can play tennis. Now other little black girls can look and say, I can be like Venus and Serena or Simone Biles, you know, where areas that we have, have been just systematically um, uh, shut out of, all it takes is for us to step into that game and show others that they can do it too. But if we shun, if we hold back, if we don't go for it, we won't be those positive role models. We won't be able to, to lead that example for them to know that this is something they can aspire to. Hey, look here. First and foremost, let me just say to all my beautiful black women, and man, you know, I love you. Man, y'all go get it. Y'all running things. Let's, you know, run some more things. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. let's, you know, go ahead and get it all, you know, for real. Mm -hmm. like, why not? <laughs> man, and that's coming from me. So I'm just letting you know, man, shout out to you. But first, man, first and foremost, shout out to you for being a role model, you know, for, look, as a, I don't even want to say old folks, but as the elders would say, you know, you made a way out of nowhere, you know? So, you know, <laughs> hey. uh, for real, no, I mean, you made a way out of nowhere. And, mm -hmm. you know, here it was. And I think this is where, to me personally, where a lot of, you know, us in the African-American, you know, community, you know, pretty much fall short. Once we see that wall, we hit that wall, oh, that's it. No more. I can't get past, you know, because I was grooving, I was doing this, but now this wall is here. Oh, I can't get over this wall. I can't get past this wall. That's it. I'm done. I don't know what to do. And here it is. We got the Tiffany and Nicole Cartwrights of the world. Like, yeah. what, this wall right here? Oh, you know, I got something for this wall. Yeah. Let me, not, yeah. Okay. All right. So, what wall y'all was talking about? Because there's the other side of the street, and I'm walking on that side of the street. I live over here now. Right. So, well, yeah. and you know, it's funny because I spent time out in LA and I always tell, especially black folks about gated communities, how crazy it is. On one side of the gate, there's this beautiful looking house and manicure lawns. On the other side of the gate, mm -mm, mm -mm, you don't want that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's hard life on the other side of the gate. So, oh yeah, you know, yeah getting through that gate to, you know, pave that way, hats off to you. Now, if people want to get, you know, man, um, in contact with you or they want to, you know, get your product besides Walmart, if they don't have a Walmart around, if they're not in the area, how can people get some 
Amara products. Absolutely, absolutely. So right now, um, they can online. It can be purchased. I can show you guys the jar again. They're all um, on Walmart.com. And so all you have to do is go to walmart.com, you put in Glam Body Scrubs and you'll see a picture of the jar that'll pop up. There's seven different varieties. Uh, they're all available. They're all amazing and they're all there. Um, also, it's on Instagram. Everybody can follow me on Instagram, Glam Body Scrubs, G-L-A-M-B-O-D-Y-S-C-R-U-B-S. Glam Body Scrubs on Instagram, as well as on Facebook also, Glam Body Scrubs. We've got a business page. Um, and then my personal page is Tiffany Nicole Cartwright, as you just mentioned. So I have my own personal page that's there too. And another one that I want to let people know, of, I started another group and it's called Black Owned Beauty Brands. And so I want to encourage people to please go and follow that page as well. Join the group and support it. Because what I'm trying to do is make a concerted effort to help other black owned beauty brands, people all over the country, wherever they may live, who have products. And we want to push these products forward. You know, Ulta just announced they have $25 million that they want to dedicate to black owned beauty brands. What we're not going to do is have them say, well, we went out and we had the money, but we couldn't find enough black owned beauty brands to donate the money to. So, oh, well. No, I am trying to start an organization of black owned beauty brands where we can go together and say, hey, guess what, Ulta, we're here for it. We're here for it. So again, it's called black owned beauty brands on social media, Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Look, all I say, saturate the market with the product. If you have to, man, the more of us that show up, the less excuse it gives them to say, well, no, we can't do this because of that. Look, exactly. it's to the point where they have too many applications or too many people have submitted their product. Exactly. Okay, we have to turn some of you all back. So we have to choose within X, Y, and Z, which still helps us because, man, the following year, if you didn't get in that year, you have a chance. Go back the next year. Exactly. You're right. And that's the type of commitment we want. But it starts with us, though. You know, it's like, listen, if you want to try Tree Hut or Lush, here, try Glam. You see what I'm saying? We've got to start keeping these dollars in the community. We've got to start supporting one another, supporting each other. And it's not like I have an inferior product. No, I have the best body scrubs in the world. And I know that. And so I'm like, listen, give me a shot. Give me a try. You see what I'm saying? Try it. To try it is to buy it. But we've got to start promoting and supporting um, and inspiring and motivating each other. Because it's tough. The grind is hard. You know, I won't lie. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's well worth it, but it's a lot of work. And so the least we can do is start supporting each other. Support, 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 support. And Absolutely. look, we got black. I mean, look here, we have. Women's Month coming up. We got Mother's Day coming up, you know, a couple of, you know, months from now and everything. So look, oh man, I'm just putting it out here for y'all. I'm just going out of you for y'all to go, you know, look up, you know, moms and aunts and all the other good stuff. Okay, right. all right. Now, Miss Tiffany Nicole Carwright, I'm enjoying my conversation with you yeah. because I feel very empowered, man, you know. Once again, shout out to your brother, you know? So, um, but I've come to my very last question, the question that my show's known for, so I have to ask. What is the one word that best describes you and why? Yes, that's a great question. And I think that um, one of the words that I think best describes me would be resilient. Um, and I say that because I believe that it's only because of my faith in God um, and trusting him that when everything just went from everything to nothing, um, I couldn't wallow in that. And I didn't give up as humiliating as it was, as embarrassing as it was, as disappointing as it was. I'm just thankful that um, that I didn't stay in that low point and that I was able to see that light at the end of the uh, excuse me, at the end of the tunnel and through faith rebuild and start over. And I think that the re resilience is so important because as I look back today, I think that, you know, losing that position, what happened to me was probably one of the best things that could have ever happened in my life because had that not happened and had I not gone through that, none of this would be happening. I wouldn't be here right now. My brand wouldn't be here. The doors that I'm trying to open for other people, the jobs that I want to create, the people that I want to help, none of that would even happen. 
And so, um, but I, I think it's through resilience, being able to bounce back, being able to, to you know, pull it together and, and continue to press forward. Um, even in, in trying to shatter these, these glass ceilings and, you know, talking to people like Walmart, Target, you know, for every yes you get, you get a ton of no's. And, and any entrepreneur that's out there will tell you that. Yeah, you get that one yes, but by the time you get to that yes, you've heard no quite a few times. Um, but again, you have to be resilient. You have to be resilient. You have to bounce back and say, okay, you know what? I'm not going to look at that as a no. I'm going to look at it as a not right now. You know, mm -hmm. and, and when you hear that, you know, you catch, like I said, the bad news comes, you say, you know what? It's not failure. Like my brother always says, it's not failure. It's only feedback, you know? And so, um, so yeah, so that would be, that's it right there for me. It's just being resilient, being able to, to bounce back no matter what hits you. You know what? I'm going to get your brother on my show. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Art Cartwright, Global Empowerment Ministries. And I mean, he's awesome and amazing. Everything I know about business, everything Shark Tank, Walmart, I credit him with all of it because if it wasn't for him and Global Empowerment, I don't even know what my life would look like right now, to be honest with you. Art Cartwright, we're going to find you. <laughs> I'm just letting you know right now, our car, right? We, no, we, I'll be happy to connect you. No, I will be happy to connect you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So, once again, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this has been War with Ty Brownlow. I am Ty Brownlow. Um, remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. You can follow me on all social media platforms at work with Ty Brownlow. Or, man, you can just go to my website, tybrownlow.com. And you can also follow me on um, Apple and Google podcast platforms at World of Ty Brownlow. You can get this conversation, plus other great interviews as well. Man, Tiffany Nicole Cartwright, I thank you for being my guest. Thank you. Out, people. Peace. Thank you.